Did everybody get in here? Did I get you guys? All right. Well, thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, I'm going to introduce our speaker today is Tony Pierce with Pierce Media. Uh, they do video production, and uh, I think uh, he's got a lot of experience with a lot of uh, big, uh, big industries and uh, companies in our city. So I'll hand it over to Tony, and thanks for joining us. Thank, thank you. I'm going to mend that we have experience with big and small. Anybody that'll uh, sign a check that'll clear, <laughs> typically is our target, our target audience. All right. Okay. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, well, let me let me finish getting situated here. Uh, I, huh? I'm not used to being on this side of the camera. This is this is kind of this is a different role for me. Uh, but anyway, again, uh, my name is Tony Pierce, and I'm a president and executive producer for Pierce Media. We're a full-service video production agency located in Blue Ash. Uh, we've been around since 2001. Uh, we specialize in marketing, training, educational programs, and uh, that's, that's sort of what we do. Um, a little bit of background on me. Well, actually, let me tell you about some of our clients. So most of our clients are, we have Fortune 500 companies, uh, small to medium-sized businesses, nonprofits, and government agencies. I've been uh, in the space of video production uh, over 30 years, given away my age. I started out as a film editor with WKRC TV. Uh, went on to become a production engineer for that station. Uh, worked at WCET as a, a assistant chief engineer, and I finished my my corporate work with Procter & Gamble as a project manager and a producer. Uh, and I left them in 2001 to start my company. Uh, before I get too far down the road, I want to thank Dave Meyer for inviting me here today. And uh, Dave, uh, knowing Dave and having met Dave is sort of a, a good example of the power of video. Uh, back in 2004, I think it was, uh, uh, I was recommended today, or my country was recommended today by his wife because they were looking to produce a video for their church. And uh, I met his wife while producing a video for the Oak Hill School District. It was a video on uh, welcoming kids back to school, uh, new kids to the Oak Hill School District. Uh, Dave at the time, I think, was an uh, elder uh, of the church, uh, I think Westwood Chevy Church of Christ. And they were looking to uh, create a capital campaign to raise money to build a new church. So we went on to produce a video for them, uh, interviewed a lot of the church goers and members, and we produced a video. And they were in a little church over in, uh, in Westwood, and the video was well received. Uh, I think they, I think he said they rose, raised like, like over a million dollars behind that. The first one was in Westwood, probably about 600,000. Okay, okay. We, yep, we did a second video uh, where we actually went out to an empty field in Miami town. And Dave and another gentleman, we shot them talking about here's where our church is going to be, and you know, and and we had we combined the, the, those uh, pieces of video with some art, uh, architectural 3D modeling that was pretty well received, and uh, so so I, I would say the campaign was successful. You guys raised the, the money you're looking for, went on to build the church, and uh, and actually that first video we submitted for a uh, a Telly Award, which is our industry's kind of version of the, uh, uh, the Emmy Awards. Uh, kind of interesting uh, wide recognition. And so we won an award for that first video. And so that was a really good experience for me. Uh, but as part of that experience, Dave had to come out to my office in Blue Ash. We were just down the street from the Office Key Blue Ash location. He came out, came out I think, to pick up some DVDs or something, or v VHS tape, probably VHS back then. And Dave said to me, he said, you ought to consider moving down the street here to my Office Key place. I'm like, I see the, I've seen the building, big HQ building. Uh, I said, Dave, I would never move there. I said, because, uh, you know, we got equipment going in and out, and you're up on the, this, you know, sixth floor there. I said, that just wouldn't be appropriate for my business. Uh, so here in uh, 2016, uh, as of 2016, December, I moved in office key. Because <laughs> the, the nature of my business and technology uh, allows us to uh, do a lot of things virtually. Uh, we collaborate with our partners virtually, uh, clients. We, we rarely have them come to the office anymore to oversee editing or anything like that. We just kind of produce these pieces. They want to uh, look at it. We put it online. They look at it. They give us feedback, and the project's done. So, uh, so it's been a real nice uh, 
opportunity for us to kind of change how we do business, keep up with technology, and, and move forward. So that's, that's my story. I guess the moral of that story is never say never. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and that was the power of video that brought us together. <laughs> that's it. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. So anyway, uh, the talk today is leveraging the power of video to promote your brand of product or service. And my first question that people typically want to know is, why should I use video? According to Microsoft, the average person has a attention span of eight seconds and less than a third of the words on the average web page are ever read. People don't like to read. I don't, I don't like to read. If I can take the easy way, I'll just look at a picture or an image. I'm, I'm more comfortable with that. So that tends to be uh, where, vid where video comes in to be a great tool. Um, you don't have to tell customers what you do. You can show them. And video allows you to give a face-to-face, -face, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, give your business a face in a way that builds trust and credibility. 60% of the visitors to a website will watch a video before ever reading any text. And again, that's me. I don't know how many of you all kind of uh, fall into that, that, that bandwagon. <coughs> Another good use of video is uh, search engine optimization. It's a great way to attract visitors to your website. HubSpot says that uh, 157% increase in organic traffic from search engines and that 62% of Google searches include video. Of course, we all know it's great for social media. Video is all over social media. Um, and it's more effective at showing your products and services than a written word. So that's some of the advantages of video. Um, let me move on here. So I'll talk about some of the current trends. As I mentioned, social media is everywhere. Video is a big part of that. I guess when social media first came out, they really didn't have the capabilities down of streaming a video cleanly. It would kind of be choppy and, 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 and stutter. But now it's just, it's just really a seamless, seamless type of tool. The new buzzword is video st storytelling. You always hear this, we want to tell a story about your brand or your business. And, and really storytelling is just taking a more in-depth look at, at, at the subject matter and try to present it in a way that's not too technical, not too uh, stats and statistics. It's just more uh, uh, crafting that, that, that story, just more of uh, a natural way to present the material. It's kind of, like I said, kind of a popular buzzword, but it does have some merit. Another current trend is uh, multiple devices. We, we love these things. I see people driving around trying to read their, their text messages and their emails and they just, they go to a restaurant, people are together, they're dining together, they'll sit there and they're up and down on that thing. So people, we love our devices. Now you can push video out on these things to anybody, anywhere, anytime. So that's one of the other current trends. Another current trend is what we're doing right now, streaming, streaming video over the internet. Again, the, uh, the quality is good, uh, it's just the, the ease of doing it's become much easier, and it looks pretty decent. You don't have to, you, it used to be you to have racks of equipment and processing gear and, and coding gear to put out a decent stream. Now you can do it with, the, with an iPad. Another current trend, I don't see a lot of this, but I know it's out there. Uh, people are using videos in their emails. Uh, some people, well, I take that back. I don't see a lot of it, but I actually do it. <laughs> in my email signature, there is a link that will take you to a Vimeo page that shows a small video, a short video about my company, a little animated piece. So that, that link, I forgot it was there, to be honest with you. Uh, so people are using this to uh, market. Another way to just reach customers, potential customers. Some of the benefits of marketing with video. Attract new customers. We all want that. You can announce your new product or service, educate your customers, educate and train employees, keep remote employees connected, and let the customer tell their own story. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. That's gets to the testimonials. And I think that's a good tool for that. Okay, what I want to do now is show you a few examples of different types of videos that we produced, um, just to kind of give you a real world example. So the first one I'm going to show you is going to be a uh, case study and it's with a company here in Cincinnati called Phototype. 
they're a uh, consumer packaging design firm. And some of their clients uh, are Procter & Gamble, Hershey's, Smucker's, uh, Arm & Hammer. Uh, so I want to show you this. this I think this, this video is a good example of how they use uh, video to not only do a case study, this second here, but to tell a, what I think is a decent story. Prototype is one of our key partners. Um, they provide us with so many services and they do it all with excellence. They are integrated in pretty much everything we do. Just we have to be faster in the market. Um, we're smaller than most of our competitors and having a resource like Prototype in the building allows the turnaround time to be so much faster than if they were. Our relationship with Church of Life has been up for about 13 years now and we work on site with them on a daily basis. It allows us to be able to have So again, that was a, a uh, had a, couple, a few things going on. You had a case study, you had a little bit of a testimonial in there, and I think it tells a, a nice story. And uh, so they kind of wanted to uh, highlight their relationship with their client, Church and Dwight. And uh, I think they were pretty pleased with that, and I think that kind of accomplished what they were after. I want to show you, from the same shoot, we, uh, the same footage, we created a testimonial and that's one thing we try to do when we uh, produce videos for clients. We try to give them more bang for their buck by uh, repurposing the footage to use for different, uh, different messaging. So this is a, more of a straight uh, testimonial style video. Prototype is one of our key partners. They are integrated in pretty much everything we do. They do everything with excellence, professionally, superb eye on trying to sell packaging, and they're integral to our success. We are trying to 
move many pieces to the marketplace at once. All the details need to be taken care of, and Silver Side does a great job of taking care of the details that allows us to move faster to the marketplace. The feedback I get from my team is uh, A plus. They, you know, I think the working with Silver Side is seamless, fun, easy, and they provide just an absolutely outstanding service to our business. So again, that would be an example of a testimonial video, getting getting it right from the customer. The customer is your best salesperson to promote your you know your brand or product or service. If you get it from a customer, people they have a more believability to the uh, person watching the the actual presentation. This next video uh, is is a sample of a product rollout. Uh, this company is Verative. They were formerly uh, Expedex. Uh, and they had a new uh, product offering for their clients that they want to roll out, and this is what we came up with for them. A little more uh, technical and data-driven, and I might uh, push skip forward in it if we watch a little bit of it. So that was an example of a company that already had an established customer base, and they had a new product offering, and they wanted to roll it out, you know, to roll, you know, to introduce it to the existing customers, and even uh, new customers who didn't know that it was available to them. 
So finally, uh, I want to show you uh, another example here of uh, a, a TV ad, TV commercial that we produced for a smaller organization. It's a funeral home. Uh, they've been uh, long, it's a family run business, long time customers. Uh, we do local spots for them. But just to show you, uh, one, of the, one of the things now that advertisers are doing uh, to create content for, for the social media is they'll take uh, footage they've used from a TV ad and repurpose it for a longer piece that can go on their website or on, on social media. That gives a little, it digs a little bit deeper, or maybe they want to tell you know, a little longer story about the organization. So I'm going to show you the, the TV piece. This is what we've done here. The TV piece, and then we'll look at the, uh, the web piece. Sorry, that slate's on there. <clears throat> Over 60 years ago, my dad began our family business built on the promise of dignity, respect, and service to others. Those values were taught to me at an early age, and I still live by them today. And it's to that legacy that I'd like to introduce the Donald Jordan Memorial Chapel. Just like the name you've known and trusted for over 60 years, we provide a superior service at an affordable price. Donald Jordan Memorial Chapel, a legacy of service, a lifetime of trust. Okay, so that's a that's gonna that's a local spot. They'll run on cable and it's on the local TV stations. And while we were there, like I tried to, I told Don, I said, "Look, we got all you know, we got all this footage. Let's do something else with this. Let's let's uh, extend our reach, and let's give you more bang for your buck. Because once we're there to shoot, you've already spent the money. Because we we build our time in half day and full day increments. So once we come out, you got us for either five hours or ten hours, and we can shoot all day. And uh, and then repurpose the footage." Oh yeah. Do you have like a well, you know, every project is kind of uh, is different. Uh, they kind of customize, but uh, up front, we usually we usually will have a script that we're working off of, or kind of a guide. So once we get develop that, we kind of know how long it's going to take <coughs> to produce a given project. We we shot that. We did this. It was like a half day shoot. Yeah. No, well, I take that back. <laughs> it was a, it was a full day, because we, we we shot the one piece at, at his home, and about the piece I'm about to show you we shot at their facility. Well, some of it was at his home. We 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 split between his home and his facility to get that done. So here's an example of the same uh, person, same footage, but they want to put this on their social media channels, on their website, and, which is what they're doing, and uh, you know they, they were able to get a little more, as I say, a little more bang for the buck since we were already there. My father had uh, a saying that he used to tell me all the time. He said, if you take care of the people, they will take care of you. I, I want people to know that Donald Jordan Memorial Chapel is a true family-owned and operated business. Uh, I am the sole proprietor. My wife is the office manager. And we are a true family business. I was raised in the funeral business. My father, when he started his funeral home in 1953, a lot of times when death occurs, one of the first questions is, what do we do? A lot of people have never had to deal with the death of a loved one, so they don't know who to call, uh, what decisions have to be made. I try to take that burden away from the family, do as much as I can for them. No one should walk away from the funeral service feeling bad about selections that they made or the type of service that they do. The products that we selection of caskets and urns. So when someone walks out of here at the end of the service, I want them to feel relieved and the burden lifted off their shoulders. And I believe that if I take care of people, they will take care of me. My dad built a business built on that, and I'm trying to continue that legacy. Donald Jordan Memorial Chapel, a legacy of service, a lifetime of trust. So again, that was an example where we were able to uh, deliver two different messages in two different mediums under the same project. And I think it was a good example of storytelling as well. Do you have a suggested time if you're doing a social media or video like this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, less is more. So I, I usually try to keep them between a minute to two minutes if we're doing it for the web. Again, it gets back to that attention span thing that we talked about at the top. 
what kind of guidance do you give once you produce the video, give it to them, as far as putting it on social media, some kind of plan, or just so they use it right and they feel like they got value and it uh, works for them? My whole thing with my company is, is to give uh, uh, as much value to the client as possible. And so in that arena, I have a specialist that I work with here, John. He's our, my social media guru, and we'll bring him into the process, and he'll, he'll sit down. They have a lot of expertise in identifying the, the different channels where that video should run and creating schedules and things like that. So, so that's something that we offer that I didn't offer. Again, it's, it's about technology. That's something that two years ago I didn't offer. Uh, me and John met with a common client uh, on a project, and uh, that's something that they work, they specialize in. So now I've been able to make that offering for my business, and in turn, when they have a need for video, uh, I'm the producer for their business, so. It's a, it's a really good question because I think a lot of marketers don't ever ask that question. They just say, they have a need they've identified for a video, and they don't really connect it to everything else that they're doing. Right? So there's social media applications, there's even public relations applications uh, to it, obviously website application to it, events. Uh, there's now uh, digital brochures that you can create. Yeah, right, you open them up like the old greeting cards, it'll play a song. You can now buy those. Bucks a pop, and you open up the direct mail feed from video play. So there's applications in that too, right? So video can, it, to Tony's point, uh, is so integrated across uh, different technologies and aspects of the marketing realm uh, that if you're not thinking strategically about it, you're probably wasting money because you can leverage that across so many things because you've already invested in doing it. Yep. Try not try to integrate it into everything else you're doing, it. and when you get into B2B trade show booths, uh, you know, event marketing. Stakeholder communication, email marketing, all of it can be leveraged all across the board. If you don't do that right, then you might say, well, video is not important because yeah. even though just because you didn't implement it right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you discount it. And, and, and then people make the mistake of, well, I don't fully get it. I don't fully get its, its uh, potential impact. And so I'm just going to grab my phone and I'll just shoot this quick video and it'll be fine because I only need it for this small thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's the difference from 10 years ago. We all have yeah. a, a high definition camera in our pocket, which is cool. Mm -hmm. But you see on, on what Tony, sh you know, when we did, Tony and I did a shoot a couple months ago, and he's got a makeup person there, he's got the lighting person, he's got the sound person. And if you put up a video that you shot on your phone and nobody can hear what you're saying because it sounds terrible, because all you have is this little mic here, right? And the lighting's terrible and it looks all dark. You're doing more damage to your brand, yeah. even though it's cheap. Thanks, John. And then I'm going to speak a little bit to that uh, shortly. Uh, and it's, it's funny because years ago, I, I've kind of, in the last few years, I had changed my mindset. People would come to me and say, we want to produce a video. And I'm like, okay, sure. Let, you know, what do you want to talk about? Let's, let's do it. Now my first question is why? Why do you want to produce this video? What are your, what are your goals? What are you, what are you doing with the video? And, uh, and that gets more into a, a strategy, come up with a plan that, uh, that will, will that we, we can produce a video that'll do what you want it to do. That's, that's real important to me um, for my clients. I don't, because for me, if, they can, if it does what they want, they'll come back. If it doesn't, they put it on the shelf, then you won't get called back. You, you probably won't get favorable reviews from it. So that's, that's kind of what I strive for. Okay, so now I've told you about the video, different types of videos, and one of the biggest questions I get. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, what's the turnaround time from contract to final uh, product, both in terms of script writing for you guys and uh, video it, production if, and editing? If we were doing like that TV spot, I think we could turn something around like that comfortably in, in two weeks. Uh, if we did a more in-depth piece like the, the case study with Arm and Hammer, that might take four weeks to kind of flush out the ideas of what you want to do, uh, get it shot, get it edited, get it approved. And a lot of, we spend a lot of time up front, the up front work, trying to uh, come up with the, uh, the concept, come up with a, uh, a script. So that's where, I think that's time well spent. And, and we try to, when we meet with new clients, we give them a, what we call a creative brief. And it's a form that I have them fill out that kind of tells me everything they think they want about their, you know, involving their project and, and you know, everything from, you know, wh what their goals are, what kind of colors they use in their branding, uh, just sort of a, a wish list. Then we take that and come back to them with uh, concepts 
for the particular project. So how do you get started? Kind of speaks to some of the questions. First thing you want to think about, what type of video do you want to produce? Your goals and your budget. Which, and all these things are typically driven by the needs of the company. You know, what, what are you trying to do with the video? One of the things I want to point out on that is, is budget. A lot of times clients don't want to tell you how much money they want to spend. And for us as producers, uh, it really kind of slows up the process. If we, if we know what your budget is going in, we can offer you up ideas that fit the parameters of, of how much money you want to spend. Some, sometimes we'll, we spin our wheels by coming back with these great, what I think are great concepts, and they love them. Oh, yeah, this will work. Then we tell them the price point, and they're like, oh, well, I, I can't do that. You know, that's, that's crazy. I'm not, you know. So I've learned that let's, get the, let's, get, let's find out where you're at up front on the money. And uh, get advice, you know, when you're looking for a company, get advice from your friends and colleagues. Do online search. I, I put there preferably a local company. I mean, there are companies that will come from out of town to work with you, but if you're trying to save a few dollars, we have a lot of talent here in Cincinnati that get the, get the work done that you want to do. And uh, ask for examples, uh, demos, and, and, and references from the potential company that you're going to work with. And there are questions that, the company should ask you, if they're not asking you these questions, then you might want to look somewhere else for a company, but they, they should be good listeners. You know, when they sit down with you, listen to what the client is telling you that they want to do. Don't bull, you know, bum rush them with your ideas and your creativity. And, you know, it's about them. Listen, listen to the customer. And so, you know, this is kind of obvious. What kind of video do you want to produce? You know, like again, sometimes uh, companies will tell you what they, what they think you should have. Uh, what are your goals for the video? More importantly, who's the audience? That's a big one. Who are you, who are you aiming this video toward? Um, how would it be distributed or shown? Explain the process and again, get back to budget. Now here's a, the big one uh, next is uh, what does it cost? This is the question I get all the time. It's a hard question to answer. This is a long slide. I'm going to read it to you back because I think it's really important. And uh, it kind of speaks to what John was saying. Uh, Today's proliferation of decent quality, low cost video cameras and editing software has put video within reach of practically anyone but it takes more than equipment to create engaging video. It requires hard-earned experience, technical expertise, and talent. In addition to cameras, mics, lights, <coughs> software used by professionals produce much better images and sound. And because video is a complex process of shooting, directing, etc., it often takes a team of professionals, or sorry, a team of specialists to make truly great video. Depending on the scope of your project and your budget, professionally produced video can require as few as two people which is typically a videographer and an editor, or a whole team of specialists and assistants. So the cost of video typically is driven by three things. Time, how long does it take uh, to pull the project together? Talent, how good are the people that are working with you on the project, their crews? Uh, more, you know, more talented team will always produce a better product. The top talent is in demand, so it comes at a premium. And tools. Uh, Everybody has the tools they need to produce a simple video, your phone, uh, consumer-based uh, editing software. But you get what you pay for. Professional level cameras, lighting kits, and post-production editing suites, and the people who know how to use them cost money. So that's something to think about. Next, we're going to talk about the five degrees of video production, the, sort of the range of cost. So our, our first degree is the amateur. Now, this is a person who uses is uh, basic consumer video equipment to shoot and edit your own video. The sound lighting won't be great, but for a situation where quality isn't important to you, it's, it's probably okay. The danger is, if you're using the wrong situation, it can damage your image, your brand. You know, you got a, a nice reputation, a, a rather large company, people kind of know who you are, and you stick a video that somebody shot on their phone, it's shaky, and you can't hear them. What's that going to say about your company? I mean, it can do a lot, do a lot of damage depending on how you use it. So. It, uh, the good thing about this video is it's free. Uh, it, we all like free, notwithstanding the equipment. But again, uh, think about your, your brand. Number two, it's a semi-pro. This person is a videographer with some experience using a prosumer camera. And editing software can produce decent video. The results are all over the place. Depending on the operating skill and the available time, the final product, while competent, usually lacks polish and is less interesting to watch than a professional product. This type of video can be useful for video blog posts, recording events, and internal training, although it's typically not high enough quality to 
put on your website permanently. So the next degree is professional. We're moving up here. At this level, you get a team of professionals who use professional level tools. They won't spend as much time on the project as premium pros, which is next, and they won't bring premium talent to the job, but they will produce crisp, credible video. Uh, it won't elicit cheers, uh, but it won't embarrass you either. This type of video is most appropriate for client uh, case studies, profiles, description of services, and recruiting. Price range $1,000 to $10,000. Our fourth is premium. Premium videos contribute, I'm sorry, combine top talent and high-end tools. The team spends much more time planning and editing uh, and producing a product that generates excitement and buzz. This is potentially award-winning material that tells a compelling story and really engages the viewer. Invest in premium video when you want to grab people's attention, tell your company's story, present engaging case studies, or recruit great people in a competitive environment. And that cost is going to range from anywhere from $5,000 to $50,000. This, uh, number four and number three on the higher end, I, won't say on, I should say on the higher end, but that's kind of where we play, where Pierce Media, that's the bulk of our, I'd like to think, this is where we want to be, but that's, that's kind of where we spend most of our, our efforts. And finally, yeah, this is uh, Hollywood. Now, you don't have to live in Hollywood to create a superb, top-notch video. You just need money and lots of it. This is video at its very best, and typically only larger, you know, Fortune 500 companies can afford this. But it's out there. You can do it. You can do it right here in Cincinnati. Uh, this level is typically uh, it incorporates extensive planning, creative concept development, script writing, the best production tools, you know, lighting, studio rental, set design, global travel, and graphics and effects by talented designers. If you have the budget. You can use it for high-end advertising, viral campaigns, or a signature piece about your firm. So the cost for a two- to three-minute video here is uh, 100000 to $1 million. And that's, that's typically like your, your Procter & Gamble commercials. Oh, you, you, you need, this is a space you need to be in? Well, we, can de we can deliver it for you, and we want to deliver it for you. And we'll do everything we say there. We'll help you, uh, uh, you know, work. <laughs> yeah, really. We'll give you a if, you, if, you, if you're here today, we'll, we'll, we'll knock 25% off of that. <laughs> so that's, that's sort of the, the, the five degrees of, of, of uh, production. And uh, that's really it for the presentation, if you, know, if you have additional questions. Um, I guess the thought, uh, if you're watching the video here, it just shows you the ex exponent. Uh-huh, narrative now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But but the, the funeral home where he says this is what we believe is the starting cost of that world. And and it goes back to a presentation we had before uh, in one of the lunches that talked about sell the why and not the what. Yeah. It really got into why it's more than storytelling. Mm -hmm. And it's you know, really I, I I can see the difference. Oh yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and I, I preference that before I, I, I showed it, saying, hey, this is more technical, a lot of data. This guy, he was kind of data-driven. We'll show you these finer points of what they're doing. And, and it's, it's, it's a little older, too. We shot that about three years ago. So, so now, you know, our focus is, again, to kind of dig a little deeper, kind of, t like you say, uh, the why, kind of tell that story. So, but, you know, but again, there's more example of they got a new product, they rolled it out, Mm -hmm. um, I, I was reminded how powerful video is recently. We, we have a company that uses it. The company that uses it downtown and also oh, yeah. and, it's, and it's grown and been a great uh, user of our service for many years. And the guy came to me recently and said, remember that video you sent to me back years ago? <coughs> I didn't remember that. But it was when they first came out with this camera, you could buy and post on the, the web. And I sent him the video. Instead of sending an email, in the video, and that was it was it was cause that relationship to start. So it reminded me of the power of video, and I, and I really think for people in the professional service law and compliance space, you really got to build that trust. There's no better way to build that trust than giving a person a high level, high level of responsibility. No, I agree. I agree. And then finally, maybe it would make sense to have a time when people. Set up a night and have that set 
set up the same for three or four companies in one day, and they have a story. I, I agree with that, and, and that's the bang for the buck. If we're going to come in for five hours, you know, yeah, let's 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 talk to four, you know, three, four, or five people. Uh, a, a, a good way to do what you're talking about, uh, even like you know, for the, the lawyers in here, is to create a sort of a uh, just a personal profile about who you are. Sit down and interview this person, and just talk about who you are, your business, what you believe in, and what type of value you can bring to your your, your client base. And you stick that on your website. You stick that on the, on the About Us page. That's where that goes. And it'll be very powerful. Then, you, again, you can repurpose it, put that on your Facebook page, put that on your LinkedIn profile. So yeah, I think that's, that would be a good use of that, that type of uh, messaging. You have questions? Yeah, we'll we'll go away, and and we try to we try to work with our clients. I, I call it partner. We partner with clients, so based on uh, our conversations and your creative brief, uh, we'll take a creative brief. Then we'll come back. Let's have a meeting. Just sit down and talk about it. Talk about what these different things mean. What you're what you're, what you're uh, telling us. Then we'll go away and come back with two or three ideas. So here here's a couple of uh, concepts that we think can get the message across. It's just an outline. Then once if they like the the uh, the concept, then we'll go back and write a script around that and really get dig deeper into the messaging. Mm -hmm. I know with photography that the equipment changes often. Mm -hmm. uh, how often does videography the equipment change and you have to update that? Boy, that's a good question. You know, when I started my company, I owned everything. I owned editing, editing suites and cameras. Uh, and as technology evolved through uh, the mid 2000s, it was t it was changing like yearly, especially as we made the transition from a standard definition to high definition video. Every year, they, they you know the the rate of what they were developing new products was like every year. So uh, I made a decision back in uh, what was it, 2010, 2011, that I wasn't buying any more cameras. I, I stopped buying them. So we create we pulled together our production teams as independent, most of our independent contractors are specialists at what they do. So we hire videographers or cinematographers, we hire editors. And so we, I let them go out and buy the new toys and gadgets and I can stay <laughs> up with the latest tools. Also, there's a company here in town called the Camera Department that we work with and they, they, their sole mission is to sell uh, camera and lighting equipment and they uh, also keep up with the latest, uh, you know, the newest equipment and we can rent from them. So we got a particular project that you think requires a certain look. We'll go there and rent a camera for for just a day, and uh, so that's that's how I work, and it got me out of the the owning piece of it. I got I can't tell you the amount of old equipment I got stored in my and now it's in my garage. Since I, since I'm an office key now, I had to I got rid of my my, my big space. So some of the stuff is in the garage, but it's that's obsolete. I mean, uh, a, a video recorder that I paid five thousand dollars for now I can't give it away. As a matter of fact, some of the monitors that we use, uh, I try giving them away to schools. Well, we don't want these, these square standard things. <laughs> so I had to donate them to, to an organization that, that, uh, that uh, recycles them. So yeah, technology is, is, is good and it's bad. You know, I think it's, it's great. Technology has allowed us to get tools cheaper. Uh, it allows us to collaborate, but you know, I, I'm sure as some of you will agree, it could be a curse too. People driving and texting, and we kind of lose that human connection uh, th that that we've always had. So, so that's how we deal with that. Thanks, Tony. All right. Uh, Thank you. Unfortunately, we aren't giving away a Hollywood production movie, <laughs> but we can send you to the movies. And it looks like Mark Basil. Oh. Uh oh. All right, thank you. Great. I appreciate the opportunity to come talk to you guys. And uh, next month, our, uh, let's see, we are in uh, Westchester. Uh, the speaker is Drew Dinkenlacker. His, uh, let's see, what, what was, what's the topic? He's a, marketing. He's a marketing expert. Um, he does uh, He does a thing, I don't know if he's talking about, but he, he does the Super Bowl commercials. He always does a review of the Super Bowl commercials. I'm not sure if that's what he's going to be talking about, but 
uh, come out to Westchester first Wednesday of every month. We'll be there. So thanks for coming. Good. Good. Good.